Welcome, bet riders around the world. My name is Gary Solomon, and you're watching the Laid Back Bike Report Town Hall number four. Glad to have you all with us today with the new Town Hall format, and we've got a wonderful show in store for you today. Let me tell you just real briefly again what the Town Hall format is. It's something that we came up with to fill in those weeks between the monthly uh, regular laid back bike reports. And we try to emphasize uh, viewers as guests. And if you want to be a guest on the Town Hall, laidbackbikereport at gmail.com. Shoot, uh, shoot us an email and we'll uh, see about getting you on. We like to emphasize industry leaders around the world uh, and have them on the show to talk to you about what it is they do, maybe the history of what they have done, and uh, AMA sessions, ask me anything so that you can find out what you need to know about a particular manufacturer that you either uh, have a product of or maybe you're uh, interested in purchasing one of their products. So. We're going to go with the industry leaders. It's the second thing. And panel discussions is the third emphasis. If we have time, and I'm going to try to make more time for that too. We have a wonderful panel of, um, of expert uh, bent uh, shop owners and experienced bent riders, uh, as always. So we're going to put questions to them and maybe have a little discussion on some topics of interest to uh, you and all of us. So that's the idea behind the, uh, behind the town hall. Now, in today's uh, webcast, we have, first of all, Hardy Zebeck, good friend of mine. He's the producer of Spetsy, which is one of the, if not the largest recumbent show in the world in Germany. And we're gonna talk to uh, Hardy about uh, Spetsy past, present, and future. A lot going on uh, with uh, Spetsy uh, to talk about. Uh, secondly, we have uh, another German friend, uh, Heiko Truppel, who is the marketing manager of HP Velotechnic, one of the premier uh, recumbent uh, manufacturers. Uh, and uh, Heiko is going to uh, run through a, a bit of the history of HP, runs back uh, better than 25 years. Uh, and we're also going to have an AMA session with Heiko. So if you have questions about HP, uh, if you have a Scorpion or a Gecko or a Street Machine, any of the HP products, and you have questions about it, or if you're a potential buyer and you have a product that you want to ask about, this is the show to do that on. So put us uh, a chat message question there, and we will, we will put that uh, to Heiko a little bit later on. And then, as I said, I'm going to try to reserve a little bit of time for our uh, uh, panel discussion today. We'll see how that goes. So as you are all well aware, I could not do this show by myself. Far from it. I have a wonderful cast of characters who crew this show, help me out, and there they are. So let me introduce uh, them to you. First of all, from Salzgitter, Germany, it's Lars Kamm. Hey, Lars. Hi, folks. It's great to have you, Lars. Uh, also, uh, Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, the focus of some terrible weather over the last couple of weeks. And I think he's got some coming in now. Trey, hold on to your hat and handle our media today if you can. Thanks. You bet. Yep. Getting a little frosty around here. The okay. Thunderstorms and tornadoes. All right. It's, it's frosty in Alfred, New York. Uh, Alfred Station, New York either. Wait. Alfred Station. It looks like an earthquake going on over there. Peter Stahl, what's happening? It's not an earthquake. I'm moving my table, chair, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, whatever it is. This thing. There is a lot of motion going on. And it's here. 55 degrees here. It's beautiful. Oh, it looks like there's some ice behind you. There's some ice behind me. Yes. <laughs> there it is. This is what you're in for. Fun. If we haven't lost our entire audience after that one, it'll be a there miracle. Is. Thank you. There they and go. That was, that was Doug Davis, folks, from down in <laughs> Dallas, Texas. Uh, Doug. The and the class clown. Thanks for being with us. I hey, think. Doug. Hey, Peter. <laughs> let's see. And also, let's get really warm here down in Florida City, Florida. On the Withacoochee Trail, it is Denny Voorhees. 87 degrees in uh, beautiful downtown Floral City. Very nice. Hi, Denny. Glad you're with us. He'll be doing some moderating today. And shooting out to the mountains in Colorado Springs, it is... The backup man himself, Larry Seidman. Hey, Larry. Cheers. 
There you go. The HP. Uh, yep, that's right. Uh, in uh, in honor of having uh, Heiko with us today. So, fellas, thanks for helping me out as always. We're going to send you all backstage. And at this point, we're going to talk about the sponsors of this show. Aren't we? There we go. First of all, today's show is sponsored by TerraCycle, makers of exquisite recumbent parts and accessories for your bent. And trailside.bike a fine recumbent bike shop on the withlacoochee trail in florida for a limited time get a free trike for your buddy when you buy a new azub or hp trike at trailside check the link in the description below for restrictions and details and cruise bike designed for the cyclist who wants to ride farther climb faster and adventure more all cruise bikes and frame sets ship free in the USA. And Terra Trike. With the cancellation of the Terra Trike Rider Fest, they are now offering th three virtual riding events. Every participant in these rides will receive an entry into a raffle for a new Terra Trike of their choice, including the much anticipated Terra Trike Spider and GTS. Ride what you like, but get out and ride. Look for details on the Terra Trike website at terratrike.com slash riderfest or on the Terra Trike Facebook page. And the Hostel Shop. The Hostel Shop wants to make sure your only fever is spring fever. Now through April 30th, use the code SPRINGFEVER to get $250 off any recumbent purchase over $1,150. Now, get outside and practice some fun social distancing. All right. Thanks. Wonderful sponsors. Please, uh, please uh, take, care of, take care of them by purchasing whatever you can from them in these really tough times. All right. Let's get on with the show and uh, introduce our first guest. Uh, He's a good friend of mine at this point. We've worked together for a number of years. Uh, first uh, uh, at uh, my very first Spetsy uh, in 2016, I believe it was, and met uh, this gentleman who had no idea who I was, what the laid back bike report was, but he was very gracious, allowed us to roam the floor of the shows. And uh, it, since then we've worked together uh, over the last few years. And it's just a treat to have my pal, um, Hardy Zebeck on the show today. Hello, Hardy. Hello. There we go. How are you today? You doing okay over there? Uh, hello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fine. Good, good. So, Hardy, um, we have a slideshow to uh, share with our audience today that will describe the history of, of Spetsy. And so, um, can we start uh, with that first slide, if you can, Trey? And uh, if you would, tell us uh, about the early days of Spetsy, how it all came together. Yes. Uh, here you see, oh, yeah, I have a problem with, with my phone, with my uh, micro. Okay. Um, Is, it, change. Is there a delay? Uh, yes. All right, why don't you just go ahead and talk to I us? I always heard me twice. I can't talk to you like this. Just um, go ahead, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's, um, that's our first common frame. Uh, we, we did ourselves, my wife and me. And uh, Oh, that was at the time we started a, a shop. And um, uh, that was the first idea to, to get uh, to recumbents. Uh, next, please. Here you see the result. Uh, my wife uh, is driving. <laughs> and you all already, already see our logo on, on the back. Uh, which we ch um, modified a little bit today, but but that's the origin. Uh, next. So here we go. 
that's uh, Süddeutsche Spal Spezialratmesse. <laughs> uh, we, we were shy at, in the beginning, <laughs> uh, but uh, there were a lot of visitors from the first moment. So you see the first hall. Here you have Here you, you have um, the, the lovely um, um, trike which uh, bends into the curves and was the famous uh, trike of the show. Everybody wanted to, to try it, but uh, there were only a few people who were allowed. Next, please. There you see my partner and our first trainee. He helped us a lot with Spezi a lot of years. Yeah, and that's after the first Spezi. Um, uh, and these people are, were the, the main organ organizers. So you see on the on the left, you see Ludger Hörmann. He is the webmaster till today. And then there's Wolfgang Lange, my former partner, and our trainee and another, uh, uh, another friend. Next, please. Here you see uh, the, the lottery. Let's, let's say that we take the draw. Um, um, uh, at the end of every show, uh, you could win uh, some prizes. And um, you see on, on the left, there is, uh, is the first prize you can see. And we all, always had a lot of children who were interested, who will win these prizes. Next, please. Here, it's already um, the second year. You see, you see that uh, oh, it's the thir third year. You see uh, that the stage is uh, it's uh, occupied by by exhibitors. Before the first years, the two first years we had show we had uh, shows uh, events on on the on the, um, on, the on the stage. But uh, then uh, there were so many years, the third year, we had to use also uh, the state and also the gallery. Next, please. Here you see um, the gallery. And uh, today we, we don't use anymore the gallery because uh, disabled people can't get, get there. And so it was not, a, not such a good idea. Next, please. And here you see the test track. That's the heart of the show. From the beginning on, people wanted to try out uh, all, all sorts of bicycle. And that's a lot of fun. But also, uh, we recognized the first years, uh, a lot of work uh, to do it right, to do it properly. Next, please. Here you see also the uh, already light car, the velomobile uh, in, in um, yellow. And behind you see the visitors waiting. Um, so about 30 people could drive, could, could uh, test, and uh, the others had to wait. Next, please. Yes, and here uh, it's maybe the third year. Um, you see, uh, or it's no, it's the second year of HP Velotechnic. You you see how they have uh, uh, arranged their stand. <laughs> they on the left uh, there were uh, cartons with wavy, and on the right there were cartons with um, with another uh, bike from them. 
Uh, next, please. Yeah, the young lady. Oh, uh, I think uh, Gary must know her. Is that Karen? She at that time she was already uh, in the service. Yes. And that's this the fifth year of uh, we did, did the show. And you see it uh, by the catalog she has in, in her hands. Uh, it was the first catalog we did. And um, uh, there were many others following. Uh, if you would like to, uh, to see it, I could show. Um, yep. Let's go back to uh, Hardy. There we go. Yep. Let's see what you have. Yes. Oh. <laughs> so we have different ones now and um, a lot of yeah a lot of different models. Yeah, it's it's a pity but it's too too uh oh, no it's We can see okay. it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So very nice. Every year we have had a di different motive. Let's go back to the and, slides, um, guys. Yeah. Yes. Next one. That's an exhibitor. Carmen Brück. I wanted to show you this nice lady because she she is disabled. She uh, can't walk, but she was. She was able to build trikes. Um, the blue one she did with her friend, and she was selling them and putting them at our shows, the first shows, during the first shows. And then she came, and you see now, if you uh, look at, at the back of the tr tricycle, there's an electric uh, box. And uh, she showed me, Hardy, look. And uh, she was uh, cycling by electric uh, pulses. She, she could move her legs and she, she developed it. So uh, we, we met a lot of these people uh, Doing on her own some new things uh, to to bike to the bike industry during all the years at uh, at Spezi. Next, please. Yeah, that's the that's the fifth year, and here we have the second hall. The fifth year, uh, we we started with the second hall, and uh, it's our stand. You see Hasis Ratschlach, that was my shop. And um, the idea at the beginning of the show was um, um, sh to make a show for the shop so that we could sell more, more uh, recumbents in the shop and it worked. Uh, and five years later, we were in an organization which was called Ligerat Profis. So the professionals, a club of professionals, of professional shops. Oh no, guck dir das an, das ist schon das zweite Mal. Oh, shit. <laughs> <It's a laughs> we can, we can still hear you, Hardy. It's okay, we can still hear you. Ah, jetzt bin ich da. You're all right, go ahead. Und jetzt, ah, jetzt klappt alles super. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> okay. So, uh, next, please. There you see with some, some bicycle. The red one that's, is, is still mine. It's uh, from Hamburg. And it, it's called Fast, and it goes fast. <laughs> um, yes, uh, next. Uh, th that's... Um, also the second hall, and um, you see the lively discussion between visitors. Next, please. Then uh, in 2004, 
we started a race, a trike race. And uh, it got quickly very famous and we had to do it every year for nine years. We had this trike race where a lot of people came from other countries to take part in that trike race. And you see uh, there's Rob Hag from, from England. He had also a recumbent shop. He was a very good driver. And behind, it's Hase, Marek Hase. Next, please. Yes, it's a show photo. It was not a race. <laughs> That's my daughter in front. And here you see it. It's some years later. There were already these these bands. Uh, you you have to to go by by the uh, trike. Uh, next. Uh, sometimes it will really be hard with this and uh, often it's a uh, struggle between Haas and HPV HP uh, they, they changed one year uh, 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 of, Haas, of the team of Haas one and the other was one of the team of HP Villa Technik. But there were also other drivers. Yeah. Next, please. Yeah, next, please. Here you see, uh, in the end, it was very professional. We, we had a, a starting ramp, and uh, there was somebody who was uh, um, uh, co commenting, um, uh, he, he, he was uh, talking all the time uh, what uh, driver was uh, in the front or, or back and we had, that was a, a system, uh, um, in an event in, in the event. Hardy, right, go ahead and take a drink and I'm going to try something here because we see oh. you on here twice. Oh. Um, Lars, I'm going to go ahead and kick him yes. on that second one here. Let's see if this makes any difference. Okay, Hardy, this might help a little bit. Go ahead if you can. I don't see anything, though. No. All right. That's what I was afraid of. So, um, <laughs> look, uh, I, I'll tell you what I'd like you to do, Hardy. Um, can you uh, – you, you, you can't see us at all? No. Can you, can you see us right now at all? I, I can hear you very yeah. well. You had you you were on this you were on the session two times. Can you look and see if you have another tab open on your computer that might have us there? You have you have yes. StreamYard session two times. So yes. I got rid of one. Can you look and see if it's there? You uh, should be change it. Change, change look the at computer. Two different tabs. Do you have two computers going? Y yes. All right. What can you look? But, but I don't have the uh, the number there to to get in. Right. Uh, right. Takes time. <laughs> All right. Right. You know what? Can, can you? Um, I'm reluctant to do this, but I'm thinking maybe yes. you need to leave the session and click on the link again to come back in. You know the. Okay. The okay. Of, go ahead and do that, and we're going to talk for a little yeah. bit while you're gone. And come yeah. on back. Okay. okay? Okay. Right, see you in a okay. I see you now. No, no, oh, I you see you it? clearly. I just had to say that. Let's get back to the slideshow, okay. and, and now we hear you much better. Yeah. Um, yeah. There we go. All right, continue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. great. Uh, there you see um, the uh, on the left. It's it 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 is uh, the same bike you you saw with uh, uh, the. Um, uh, at the beginning, uh, with which was so uh, appreciated, you remember, with the um, fairings. Mm -hmm. and that's the same bike, which can bend into the curves. Next, please. Yes, uh, that it was time to change uh, the place uh, for. Uh, the test tracks because uh, people had to wait had to wait too long, and so uh, next to our main hall, 
there was a there, there is a bus stop and we asked to get this bus stop for our show and so we started uh, uh, the test track here and that was a very good change next please yeah <clears throat> you see some some riders and uh, we could three times uh, uh the number we could uh let them go at the same time than at the other place hardy can you hear me a little bit better now are you able to hear yes, me? yes it's great all right, now it's we great. can talk all right that's all yeah. it was. I, really I have a couple of, okay good good i yeah. um i have a couple questions when i saw the pictures of that uh, track with the gravel and i didn't know what that was so you had some sort of uh contests going on is that what it was at, at, and how long did that go on? Oh, it did. It, it was a, a truck race. It it went for for nine years. It was very famous. This this race. Uh, there were drivers coming from from uh, different countries to to take part in in that race. And uh, here is Joseph uh, Joseph Janning. I think you know Joseph, a countryman of yours. And he says, yes. "I recall fierce battles between the factory teams uh, from Haza and HP yes. Velotechnic and observers." We're, we're swallowing plenty of dust, he says. So yes, he that's those. right. It's really that's cool. Right. I saw those. I, I was thinking, boy, I wish I would have seen those. So any chance those are coming back at some point? Um, it, the end was uh, because uh, of an accident. Oh. We, we had an, uh, an accident w with a child. And uh, afterwards, uh, nobody was really... Uh, interested in in continuing it of was course. it was a shock and uh, the uh, the small uh, girl she was not uh, uh, she was not uh, too too much injured but um, it was a shock and, it made everyone uh, think about what yeah, might happen yeah yes yes and okay. uh, i was wondering we, about that yeah yes Okay, let's go on to the slideshow again and continue with uh, okay. the current uh, um, the, the current yeah. test track, which is amazing. Yep, go ahead. Yeah, here you, you see the, uh, the test track and somebody of our crew is helping uh, a, a new uh, lady who wanted who wants to test uh, uh, recumbent and she is uh, she's not very uh, uh, clear about it. <laughs> So hour, yeah. we have a lot of a uh, lot of service service people who try to help in those cases. Next, please. Yeah, here's here you see our second uh, uh, lecture a room lecture hall that was uh, at the time in the basement of Hall Three. So at that time there was all also a Hall Three like now and uh, there is the change now we are at university uh, at at germersheim's university in in a very nice room that's the modern one next please there you see a taxi uh, bringing people from one hall to the other yeah, Hardy, let's explain to folks who may not know that yeah. uh, that Spetsy uh, is uh, now um, it's it's all it, it's kind of diversified into a number of test tracks and a couple of other buildings. It's not yes. just in one building. And so you yes. have set up these wonderful taxis, all human powered mm -hmm. taxis to take people. If they don't want to walk, they can ride a taxi between the different uh, venues, can't they? Yes, that it's uh, a good, at the time, that was a very good idea to do that. And uh, we, uh, for that, we uh, blocked the, the road. Uh, the street was, uh, is that there are no cars allowed at, uh, when Spezi is running. All right. And Hardy, we have a question here that is a good one uh, and something that I have noticed. So... The tr other trade shows that I've attended and the ones that you see here in the States are strictly trade shows. And what I mean by that is you have vendors, you have manufacturers and producers buying booths and they are there to talk to retailers or maybe some of the general public. 
But Spetsy is not just that, it is that, but it is also more of a festival that celebrates uh, special bikes. And so, uh, uh, let's see, Kubez, Kubezinkowski asks, I'd love to hear Hardy's thoughts regarding the balance of holding Spetsy somewhere between a trade show and a nerd gathering. How has it changed <laughs> over the years? So did it start out being people showing up and showing off what they have built or did that kind of come over the years? Uh, yes, uh, I think uh, it came over the years. Um, the first time there were nearly only uh, visitors uh, who wanted to to see the show and uh, to to test uh, the bikes, but during the years uh, there were more more um, adepts of Spezi. They they come every year or nearly every year, and um, they they showed uh, what they have built. And um, yes, it, it became more and more, and so. Uh, in the last years, uh, I said to myself, we must uh, give them a platform. And so we have the Inventors Laboratory uh, uh, for, yeah, There's three a years tent, now. Yeah, that, that, that encourages. It's something that you guys encourage, which I think uh, it encourages innovation. I think it's a wonderful thing. Let's go on back to the slideshow, and we will mm -hmm. see a picture of yeah. that uh, Inventors tent here in a little bit. Okay, back to the oh, yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here you see a test track. That was our first uh, electric te uh, test track for e-bikes. And uh, at that time, uh, that was a company who brought about uh, 20 bikes with them and um, people could try them out. And we had to pay a lot of money to them <laughs> every year that they did run uh, this test track. And I was not so um, so amused by this test trick. And so um, one year we we tried our own test trick, and we changed also the place. Next, please. And then we we came into this nice park of Germersheim, and that that's a real uh, a treasure. This park for for our test track. This it park is, is also uh, it was a fort, uh, uh, yes. hundreds of years old for for the town of Germersheim, and uh, it is a beautiful, amazing place for sure. Yes, yes, I'm so happy with this place. And you, here you see uh, the starting point uh, where the different exhibitors have their bikes, and then uh, people can try them out and go on the test track. Next, please. Here you see oh, how uh, uh, a small part of this test track, and uh, I, I would have would prefer to show uh, a, a picture from from above, but I I didn't have one. <laughs> okay. Next, next, please. Yes. Here you see uh, after nine years of trike race, we changed to a cargo bike race. And um, it, it was, from the beginning on, it was a, a funny race. It was uh, for laughing, but also for sports. And at, uh, this, uh, that year, uh, they had to transport um, tires and barrels, beer that, barrels. That slide, Trey, I think it's got another slide of this, yeah. Yes, yes, you see, that's a nice gentleman from England. He has, oh, from Wales, he has uh, the flag on his back from Wales. Oh. And he was a bus driver of, of an English group which came to Spezi. Next, please. Uh, yes, they have had also. They have to transport also um, bottles, uh, water bottles. Next, please. Oops, no. <laughs> Should we just skip over this? Uh, okay, go to the next one. I don't know. That looks like the water bottles and things here, but let's go on. Yeah, I don't see anything, but my. my Oh, it's, you've lost it. All right, gone so, again. All right, so we're 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 more to the cargo. Go ahead, Trey. Let's let's kind of finish these up here. And uh, you know, while Hardy is trying to recover that, 
Um, we did get another one from Joseph here saying, on the margins, Spetsy is the biggest Velomobile gathering in Germany. And I can tell oh. you that out in front, are you back on? Yeah, I'm back on. Okay. Yeah, I was just telling the folks that uh, there yes, are- Yes, I, I heard you. I heard you. Yeah, go ahead. Take it from there. Yes. Uh, here you see the Velomobiles from the visitors. It's all uh, Velomobiles which are driven to Spetsy from sometimes from far away and uh, the exhibitors uh, of velomobiles uh, they are uh, on the right side you can't see them uh, and um, at the moment we we have about 20 of, of uh, velomobile exhibitors at spezi mm -hmm. next part it, yes here you you see a picture from last year Hase was celebrating their 25th anniversary uh, at Spezi and they had invented uh, a new bike, a tandem which was walking like uh, like a beast. They called it beast and uh, it was great fun. We always have, on Sunday, we always have uh, different uh, events uh, at the show uh, to distract a little bit people. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you do, which are amazing. Yep. Yeah. For example, that is a, a Stiefelrad <laughs> uh, that works. You you can you can drive with it, and uh, uh, there is a club in in Luxem Luxembourg. Uh, they come all two years with their uh, um, self-made, uh, self-built uh, bikes, and it's always fun. Okay. Next, please. Yes, here uh, you have the uh, inventor laboratory. Uh, I already mentioned it. Right, it is a wonderful place, I can tell you as well. Lots of interesting ideas that are put into the tent there and you'll get people from all over the world that are showing off the latest solar powered trikes, bikes, recumbent kinds of things of all kinds. Really an interesting place, and it's a great idea, Hardy. I loved when you started that. So yes, and for this year, we it was planned to do uh, uh, to bring them in into a, a hall. Oh. We, we, changed, we wanted to change the place, make it a little bit at, more attractive and and bigger. But yes, all right. So that's a good point yeah. <laughs> for us to start. Thank you for sharing the yeah. show, the slideshow with us. Yes. Let's let's talk about uh, what the current that's, yeah. that's the past of Spetsy, and we, with all you know, we all hoped uh, that it was going to have you were going to have a, a, a nice show here again in 2020. I know you had it all set up, and then the coronavirus hit, and all bets were off. Things changed. So first of all, tell us about. The situation as it is and then we'll talk about what you plan to do yeah, so yeah. you were going to have the spetsy would have been uh april 25th and 26th which would be next weekend would, would have been spetsy yes but you right. have made some plans uh you had originally made plans to postpone it tell us about that first of all and what's happened there what happened to the postponement yes we, we wanted to po postpone it uh to aug to the month of august and uh it everything Thing seemed to be good for it, but uh, uh, five days ago uh, we we got the news from the government that every big show uh, is forbidden till the end of August. So two weeks past when you had already yes, two problems. weeks. Yes. So that's going to put an end to Spetsy this year, uh, obviously. Uh, yes. So, but you had already been working on a an um, an online alternative. Can you tell us a little bit about what you have planned? Yes, um, we 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 are working on on an alternative. Um, that means uh, we want to do a, um, a virtual Spetsy, and um, on the. Uh, uh, 25th of April, uh, we are launching a, a new website. That means a new design, a lot of <coughs> um, a, a lot of uh, videos about the novelties and uh, <coughs> from our exhibitors, 
and um, uh, then you can look up uh, where you can uh, try these models. You try them out. You have you have a, you can have lists of of the different manufacturers, and uh, we will uh, present several lectures. Uh, <clears throat> with touristic or technical uh, topics. Then we will have an online shop. Um, normally at Spezi there's, there's always uh, a merchandise shop and uh, we will do it now online. Uh, for example, we have a new uh, <coughs> anniversary jersey. Uh, well, that's the first time we do a, a, a jersey or uh, um, uh, recumbent jersey, uh, and it's really uh, lovely. I could you show us? I, I, I will show work? you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Great. All right, guys. So um, while Hardy, go ahead and put Hardy back on there. We we need to see what he's doing. That's fine. It's it's a little dark, but we'll see it shortly. Uh, and uh, Hardy's going to give us the. Um, the link to the virtual Spetsy website. It may be the same link as Spetsy is now. We'll find out for him. But of course, uh, guys, we're gonna we're gonna have that in the um, we're gonna have that in the uh, description below, so you'll be able to link to virtual Spetsy. All right, back to Hardy here. Let, so let's see here. Stand up a so, little bit, Hardy. Yeah, yeah, let's see. yes. I will show you. Look here. The sun is coming, <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> and if you look to the back. Uh huh. You can, yes. and that says twenty-five years, Spetsy, right? Yes. So, very, so, very nice. And that will be on the merchandise site as well, right? On the yes. on the Spetsy. That's site. right. Yes. Now, Hardy, the uh, virtual Spetsy is it? Is it the same link as your usual Spetsy uh, website yes, is? is? Okay, so people can and go to that. I will put that in the description below, so people yes. will be able to head over there and check it out, and. Uh, yeah, I guess that's about all we have for today. But uh, Hardy, thank you for working with us through all the technical difficulties here. I think we <laughs> yes. got the message across. I'm sorry, uh, that's the first time that I have these problems. It's not a problem Strange. at all. <laughs> it was wonderful having you on. I I love your show. I'm 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 so honored to have you on my show this time. We will do everything we can to lead people to your website. And better yeah. luck for. Uh, 2021. We hope yes, everything will be hard. back to normal and see you in Germersheim, Germany then. So, yes. Hardy Zebeck, thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right. Bye. Bye now. All right, guys. Very good. We, we got our way through that. Um, all right. Let's move along now to our second uh, German guest of the show. Uh, let's go ahead and bring Heiko up. It's Heiko Truppel. Hello, Heiko. Hi, everybody out there. Hope you're safe. Thank you. It's good to see you. Um, Heiko, uh, as I mentioned in the early introduction, is the marketing manager of HP Velotechnic. Uh, Hardy, hi, Heiko, sorry, <laughs> please uh, introduce sure. yourself further and tell us what you do at HP. Yeah, I'm, I'm the online marketing manager. Um, started there four years ago. So um, HP Velotechnic has always been very active on trade fairs. And um, we're very present in, in the German newspapers and everything. But, uh, yeah, you know, the website was very old and uh, some things changed. Everything became digital. And uh, so HP Velotechnic is always looking forward into the future. Hi, Jesse. <laughs> looking forward um, to improve things. And, well, they got me to, um, to be here. For the yeah, online so you, community out working, there. you were working on that website for a long time to get that yep. the, the new website up which is wonderful so all right let's um while we have you here heiko let's take advantage and uh let's take a look back at uh, the history of hp and then we'll then we'll, you will bring us up to date and we'll talk about uh what you're doing today and hopefully have some questions uh for you uh from the uh from the viewers so let's uh, get that slideshow running and uh, let's start right here. Yes. Um, as you might know, HP Velotechnic is in the 27th year now, or going into the 27th year. And um, while it became a modern 
grown-up company um, it's still the core of the company is still I would say the the founders um, Paul Hollands H Hollands and then a Pulvermüller P and the second one you see here so um, they were always they were always since their early years uh, very keen on all kinds of bikes you see uh, oh, this is a mountain bike um, I know they were very keen on um, bicy uh, BMX, BMX, bicycle mo motocross. And as you see here, in, even as a young kid, Daniel um, was trying out things. So Daniel is the engineer. And, um, you can call it Velomobile, but uh, it's kind of like. Um, actually, we started with two wheelers, but uh, so, so the first trike came in 2004 but uh, 2005 um, but as you see even from the early days they um, were interested in in three wheelers and trikes so this is um, a trike which they built before the company even existed next slide please uh, here we see Daniel um, performing on a BMX so you see, it's not only recumbents, but the bike looks uh, quite bent. So it's a it's next, a bent, all right. Yeah, yeah it's a bent BMX. <laughs> next one, please go ahead. Um, here we see an early um, long wheelbase. Um, in in the first days, um, I mean, HP Villatechnik didn't invent recumbents, and uh, so when they were kids. They um, started to copy, to rebuild bikes. I, I don't know the model. Maybe Peter Stahl will, will directly tell which uh, model they copied there. But um, they started building bikes they saw and which they considered to be interesting. Let's get Peter Next. in here. Peter, what would you say that looks most like? Well, that looks like a uh, Ryan or it's more like a Ryan than an avatar. Uh, yeah, I think it's more Ryan than anything. I think they, 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 they. Um, I heard them talking about Ryan. Yeah, yeah exactly. there's a there's a European bike that looks a lot like a Ryan too, and I forget the name. Okay. I don't know, but sounds familiar. All yeah. right, thank you, thank you, Peter. Send you back down. All right, uh, go ahead. Let's go on the next, next slide. slide. Yeah. Uh, here's here Paul Holland on on the on the bike, and in the back you will see we will see on, uh, on the next slide. And uh, while we have a slide of the early years of Paul Hollins, the H in HP, uh, we might want to send Paul Hollins a bit of a greeting today. Heiko, is this a special day for him? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Data protection is very important in our company, but um, I might tell. I just when we talked about Spitzy anniversary and everything, um, I remembered that Paul is uh, it's. Paul's birthday today. So today, today birthday, is Paul's Paul, birthday. If you're, watch, if you're watching, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Paul. Yeah. Good luck. And yeah. let's, okay, let's let's go to a more uh, go ahead, uh, updated slide here. <laughs> not no, much it's not really updated, update. but yeah. with a with a with a line up um, for, before it before HP Velotechnik um, already existed. Um, they founded the company in 1993, and this picture might must be like late 80s. So you see the trike there, which we which we saw, and um, one one of the bi one of the bikes has been stolen, as I heard, and mm -hmm. as you see, the seats were made of camping camping seats, or um, in the middle, it looks a bit like do it yourself. So they um, experimented and took the things they 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 got. So next slide, please. Yeah, here you see the seat again. Um, they were very in inventive, um, even as kids. And uh, I mean, this already looks sophisticated in a way. I mean, we wouldn't build stuff like this uh, today, but um, they tr they tried out and they had the courage to try out um, many, many things. Next slide, please. You see Dan Pulvermüller on a, on a short wheelbase. As you might know, we um, started with a, with a street machine so the first H, first real HP Velotechnic product was the was the Street Machine GTE, um, which was the first short wheelbase bicycle with full suspension, which made it into um, zero production. So next slide, please. 
Um, I think on the right, this must be Paul. Um, in the back, the, the airplane looks like it was in Friedrichshafen, but I can't tell too much about this picture. Maybe it's in Cologne. I don't, I'm not quite sure. Thank you. Next slide, please. This is Daniel again with a, um, with a trike, but, um, since he looks very young on this picture and, um, we brought our first trike in 2004 and, um, introduced it to the market in 2005. Um, this must be a trike, which never made it into the, into zero production. Next slide, please. Um, this is very interesting because, um, one of the reasons <clears throat> they decided to make a company was that they won a competition. And these are the drawings. I mean, we're talking about guys um, being 16, 17 and 18, 19 years old. And by that age, they um, created this Velomobile, this uh, covered, totally covered um, trike. Um, they went to school with, the, with their bikes and they were always jealous on their teachers because their teachers came by car and they were dry and they were comfortable, com comfortably sitting in their, in their cars. And uh, they wanted something like this, but they had no driving license, not the money for a car. And so they decided to build something car-like. And um, as you see, they didn't start with just building and trying out. But um, they already made some, some, some drawings and they um, neared the topic like engineers and as pupils, as 16, 15, 16 year old pupils. And um, one thing after, after they won the competition, they had to, um, had to make some uh, description of, of this project. And um, it's funny because they were so visionary that they said, um, maybe in the future, this mobile could be equipped with a motor, with an, with an uh, electric assist, which, um, which imposes the power, depending on the power you impose on the paddle. You see, in the modern, which, which is now common as the Pedelec, as the e-bike, so they already had this in mind when they um, created this thing. Um, that's the project without the without the cover, without the fairing. Um, you see some um, some double wishbone glass fiber suspension, full suspension. So they already um, they already uh, um, dealt with full suspension trikes, and we're talking about the year. Let me lie, 1991, I think. So two years before they invented, uh, or, or they before they founded HP Villa Technic, and this is um, forming forming the the fairing, which um, brought them some knowledge about materials. I mean, they were building bikes, and then you have to create a fairing, so they were very open for new techniques, new technology. Next slide, please. You see Daniel um, inside the car or the Velo Mobile. Um, it's been it's been sponsored by some local companies, also world leaders like this Polar Moore is a world leader. Um, we are in a very um, in a very industrial and very economic um, uh, region within Germany. So um, they they all also were supported by by local companies which is very important for a company or for for young inventors that they are supported um by by already established companies um which is why for instance daniel is um part of the committee for species in in inventors um competition inventors award so we're very we profited from initiatives like this and uh, now we also want to want to share 
Yeah. Now, Daniel is uh, Daniel. Is he the chief judge? I know he's made the announcements the last couple of years of the winners of the inventors uh, tent there. So I know he's really heavily involved. It's really a nice thing. Yeah. He's one of the judges. Okay. Exactly. This is uh, <laughs> Paul and Daniel in, in very early years. So um, today, um, the hairstyle and everything changed. And meanwhile, we are all a bit gray, but uh, still young mind, I think. Uh, this picture is very interesting because um, maybe, I don't know, Gary, do you know this guy on the left side? I'm wondering if this is the gentleman that began Hase, is that right? This uh, should be Marek Hase, yeah. Um, Marek Hase also won a competition as a pupil. Um, Hase Bikes was founded one year later, so they had their um, anniversary last year. So two years ago, we celebrated 25 years, then Hase celebrated 25 years, and this year we wanted to, or we celebrate Spezi's 25th year. And um, they they met each other on a on a on a trade fair and thought, hey, this guy is um, doing weird stuff like we do, and let's get over talk to him. And out of this first talk, um, the it became a friendship, and we still still have a, have a very close relationship to to Hase bikes, and um, help each other and exchange knowledge and everything. So this is um, this also shows how, how important it is to um to to work together so what they were coming what i like i come i'm 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 uh, i came from the regular bike industry and what i really much liked in the recumbents scene is um that it's not so competitive so we're i, w I wouldn't call it family it's too big for being a family now but um, in, within the recumbent scene, you're dealing more on, on the same hate. You're, yeah, it's, it's not cutthroat easy, like easy, so many other businesses are. Other, yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah. interesting how HP and Haza and Spetsy actually kind of grew up together, didn't they? The, yeah. whole, the, whole, the whole team did, didn't they? All right, exactly. go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, here, here's you, Paul and Daniel. Um, making their wheels um, themselves. So sometimes uh, in, in our company, we are doing wheels, but um, Paul and Danny won't. <laughs> but they could. They still could, I, I believe. Uh, here's see Paul um, learning to become uh, the manager. <laughs> so in the beginning, they were building bikes for themselves. Then they sold their first bike to one of the teachers. Then all of a sudden, they became a company and had to learn many, many things. And um, so what is um, very impressive, impressive, um, especially with Paul, is um, how he has, has to, uh, there's a problem and you have to solve it. And he considers it as an interesting task. And within pff, a month, it's like he studied it for five years. He has soaks the knowledge uh, it's very impressive every day even if you know him still still very impressive yeah um on here you won't see it um no it's in the in the back you you won't see it here um i'm not sure whether this is on the cologne trade fair um i i remember pictures of this fair where you will find a green speed trike so, um HP Velotech was, um, for some years, the importer of Greenspeak trikes to Germany, um, but without any success. The German market was not uh, ready for trikes. Right, and I remember talking uh, to our late friend uh, Ian Sims about mm -hmm. uh, Spetzi in Europe, and he told me that a number of years ago that they did make an attempt to break into the European market, but he did say it had very limited success in that yeah. uh, they were he thinking at some um, point. Ian, but that Ian, Sims, Ian Sims is a visionary, has been a visionary person. I wish he could be here. I wish he could be at the Spezi. Um, but you, you see that um, he had ideas. Um, 
sometimes he had it too early. I don't know. Um, he, he brought the idea. And today, I mean, we're, we're selling the majority is uh, trikes in our company. But by this time, Ian Sims built trikes. And uh, today, the market is trikes. So kudos to Ian Sims. This is um, within the one of the first premises. Um, I think this was the first one where they brought everything together. So in um, in the early days, um, the premises were was were spread over over the over the town. So um, they had not everything in the same place. So research and development, you, you saw it. Sometimes they um, built things in the living room. And I think this was the first company, the first premises where they brought all of the production together or all of the company together. Next, please. Uh, you see um, Paul on a quite early um, trade fair. I don't know where it is, but it must be very, very old. <laughs> Next, please. And uh, Daniel within the company. I don't know much about this picture, so yeah. with trainees, I guess. Next, please. And uh, here's the um, production of street machine frames. Might, you know, the DT, so it's uh, aluminum already, I think. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, we have a supplier for, for the frames. Um, in the early days, um, the frames were made by ourselves as well. But um, some, things, some things can be done better by a supplier and um, in the case of frames um, we could not produce frames in the quality we wish while we have suppliers um, who can do this much much better so we research we can do we can do everything within the company so um, all the prototyping is done in the company um, Danny can weld and everything but um, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't buy a frame which was welded by Daniel. I prefer other frames. <laughs> um, he's good in prototyping, but not for zero production. Yeah. Uh, in here, I see um, um, bo both work as a work as a team. I mean, they um, they um, split up split up the tasks, split up the um, responsibilities, but. Um, Daniel and Paul still still sit together in the, in the office, and um, it, they are talking all day about all the all the areas in the company. So it's um, they're really a team. Um, this is one of the early grasshoppers. You know the first folding bike we built. Okay, this is grasshoppers, mm -hmm. <laughs> grasshoppers and grass. Uh, Makes sense. Next, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we already talked with Hardy about the um, about the trike races on Spezi. Here's see Daniel. Um, this was from that trike race. This is from the trike race. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Looks dangerous. Uh, he's got <laughs> or a Daniel hand. looks dangerous there, anyways, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> I think he uh, he is not dangerous, but he I bet he was riding dangerous. Uh, okay, next, please. Uh, this is one uh, quite quite well known uh, German bike journalist, uh, and uh, Paul is, is explaining uh, trikes because even to bike journalists. Um, Recumbents, as recumbents, sometimes are a new area. I mean, this journalist I know him personally. Uh, he is very familiar with trikes now with recumbents. But by this time, it was new. I mean, 2006 uh, was quite new for him. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is interesting. Um, I mean, um, inter interbike is um, history. Yeah, I thought history it was interbike. Now. Yeah, yeah. And this was um, on interbike. And in the front, some people in Germany might know him. It's Kirk Seifert, uh, former head of sales of HP Villatechnik. Um, nowadays, um, he is importing ice ice trikes to Germany and as well as TerraCycle products. So you it's see, Eikletter, uh, yes, Eikletter. Eikletter, yeah, yeah. 
exactly. So um, nice guy as well. Um, this was when we moved to the premises where before um, we moved to our actual premises. Um, Paul on a on a speed machine. Mm -hmm. um, some people might know this guy. This is uh, I always I can tell you later. The name is uh, I I just lost the name. I'm not I'm very well, bad with Trey names. was telling me when he saw this that this <laughs> yeah, is yeah. the guy that's yeah. in the Tour de France that always yeah yeah he's very very famous. Um, he's he's the devil. <laughs> Um, he's always on on the Tour de Tour de France, um, and one year he was on Tour de France with one of our trikes. Um, he built built a, um, a um, Eiffel Tower on the trike and followed followed the tour. Did he Yeah, thanks, Lars. Of course. Oh, it I, says it right on the, uh, I was, on the slide. I didn't know. Name that. names names drop in my mind one hour after. I think <laughs> I never forget a name. But I, <laughs> yeah, see, there's Jesse. Yeah. He's got it Thanks, now. Now everyone's yeah. going to come in. Yeah, with it, but... Okay, yeah. DD Sim. Yeah, but as I see now on on a picture, said the name. Yeah. Uh, here another picture from the trike race. In the front, um, it's our engineer. On the right, I see our um, head of production, and uh, the left one. Is a very strange trike with two wheels in the back. I don't know how can how can someone build these? <laughs> so, That's so nothing that you guys would <laughs> have anything to do with, would you? Yeah, yeah it looks a bit like a rabbit. Um, this is our actual <laughs> premise. <laughs> I got that. Uh, yeah, we're fine with them. Um, this is our actual pre premises. Um, the open house day, um, which we had to skip last year. Um, because of a very high production, um, we made some alternative um, alternative events later this year. Late, later in, in, in the year, um, this year, it could be difficult with our open house day, which is always very nice. I mean, for two days, the production, all, all of our stuff is, um, is busy with this um, open house day. But we, I mean, everybody loves it because um, it's the only only time in the year where people can come and visit us and we can welcome them they can test ride and everything so it's um one of the highlights of the year and it's very sad that the second time second time we have to uh, maybe skip it mm -hmm. yeah i'm sorry jesse um we don't do this anymore um this was um um when we get the frames, the frames have to has still have to be in, treated um, um, before they are powder coated, and um, we used to treat them by ourselves. This was called the waterfall because there was a water suction system um, for sucking um, off the the dust, aluminum dust. But um, uh, nowadays, some things are better done by experts. I mean, we were experts, we had experts there, but um, we outsourced this um, uh, too. Yeah. Uh, we won a lot of prizes, um, of course, for our trikes and bikes. Um, we won a lot of Eurobike awards and um, some other awards, like the band, of course, the uh, uh, band, rider, band Rider of the Year. Um, but we also got some other prizes. Um, this shows Paul having the Bur a Citizens Prize um, for social um, um, uh, initiative so for being more than a company, being a social social company. Uh, Socially which conscious, me. is that what you... Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. And this shows our booth at Eurobike. Uh, our, you will find our biggest booths on uh, Spezi and Eurobike, which are all, almost the same size, where we really show all our um, models at the booth and have all our test pool outside. Uh, so very, very sad. Um, I mean, it's a lot of 
manpower, a lot of money, which goes into uh, shows like these. But uh, they they make it, and we're very sad that we're not able to uh, attend uh, a right. show. Right, right now, it's want, all about alternatives. It's yeah. about alternatives, yeah. isn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah. And yeah, there's a crew, we, right? There's some of the crew. There's uh, some of the crew, of course. We always or always have um, people come and people leave. Um, these well, were what size? Like, what size team do you have at HP? Uh, How many are, people work there? We are more or less about um, 40, 40 heads working working there. Okay. Um, depends on whether you just count the heads or just count full time positions. Um, around about 40 and we usually have uh, four trainees so um training the shows are yes we are always um always looking for for getting forward for inventions for research and development and um the shows are turn turn indicator uh which we were of course forced to um to build because um we're the only producer of a of a legal fast uh, three wheel e bike in in Europe, and due to European regulations, um, it's considered like a motorcycle, and so we have uh, to have turn indicators as well. Um, but it's a nice thing you you can uh, show show where you want to go without um, uh, without letting loose the handlebar you just press a button and uh, shows it's better than letting loose letting loose the uh, arm in a curve and steer in a curve with one arm so uh, it's quite sometimes you're forced sometimes uh, sometimes they're just good ideas that just makes sense yeah exactly so. very good i think Keiko, that is the last slide so thank you very much for that uh, wonderful uh, history of HP. Uh, I and hope and not, not everybody is sleeping now. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, we, we're going to go and look. So, folks, right now, again, if you have questions for Heiko regarding uh, HP or any of their products, now's the time to throw them onto the uh, chat. I already have a couple of questions we're going to yeah. start uh, start out with. So, uh, here's one. one. Let's go ahead. 20, so, 20, wait, 20. 20, there 20, you go, 2019. That's the one that's 20. that's one that uh, Hardy likes. So, <laughs> all right. So you mentioned the frames are no longer made uh, in um, at your shop. So are they made in Taiwan? Is that correct? Yes, exactly. Well, um, if you if you're looking um, if you're looking who is the best, not not. Sometimes people say think uh, we're pro producing our frames in Taiwan because it's cheap. No, it's not cheap at all. Um, if you see the premises of our Taiwan companies, um, they are like five star five star hotels considered to our premises. Um, the best, the best, the most knowledge for bicycle frames made of alum aluminum at the moment. Things can change, but at the moment are in Taiwan. Um, we're not only building um, these uh, two dimensional diamond frames, like other companies, which are also produce in Taiwan. But um, we have three dimensions. So especially for the trikes, you won't find any German aluminum welder who would um, build stuff like this. Okay. And uh, Taiwan absolutely, absolutely is uh, the best frame, aluminum frame, bicycle, bicycle frame builder in the world. And where do we go when we want to have the best? to those who can do it best. Makes yeah. sense. All right, Carl Bosworth asks, how does someone in the USA buy that tail light? Or, well, there's a tail light and also the directional yeah. light. So can that be uh, purchased uh, here in the, in the States? Do you know? Yeah, it can be. And there's an, an article number. So please visit your, your dealer. You will find um, the next dealer on our website and um, ask the dealer. Um, I don't know about, um, legislation all over the world so in germany um, the turn indicator is not allowed on bicycles but on 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 trikes or cargo bikes where hand signs could be covered by the cargo um 
there you can use this turn indicator. You have to ask for your local legislation, but um, of course you can get it all around the world. All right, uh, Joseph is asking what the next big thing in recumbent and trikes might be. More customization, quads, more specifically, this is probably for you. Will there ever be a Velomobile by HP? Or carbon uh, and I, carbon trikes. People want to know I, about that as well. Yeah, I, I, I doubt so. I doubt so. Um, I mean, we are always researching and developing. And um, please allow me not to talk about things we develop now. Um, with carbon trikes, I can tell that there's, um, there have been, we have a carbon prototype in our company, but um, we have it sim since some years. Um, we try to concentrate on, try to concentrate on the uh, the things we can do very good. So like versatile, uh, robust recumbents. We never aim to be to make the lightest or the fastest. This is not HP Velotechnic. HP Velotechnic is for comfort. HP Velotechnic stands for um, versatile recumbents, so trikes which you can use for everyday life, which you can uh, travel around the world with, and which um, which are reliable, which bring bring you to the end of the world and bring you back again. Very good. And um, All right, so, yeah. um, we, we, we made some, we made some, of course, we made, um, we are always trying out things. And um, our developers are, are allowed to um, to do a lot of stuff at the moment, um, where we are um, like most of the companies, we reduced we do reduced uh, manpower a bit, but um, research and development still is at 100%. We have many many projects um, in the pipe, um, but I ca I can tell you some some things. We, well, yeah. Yeah. Spill the beans. Tell yeah. us what you can tell us. Yeah, I won't tell you what will be coming, but um, I won't expect uh, carbon to be our to be our um, werkstoff to be our. For you, you don't expect carbon to be in part of your frames. Is that? Yeah, I don't. I don't expect it uh, okay. in the future. Um, I don't expect a Velo Mobile because some people think. To create a velo mobile is like taking a trike and then making a cover. But if you want to have a good velo mobile, um, the velo mobile, the the cover, um, is part of part of the structure. So if you want, if you would just want to add a cover on to a trike, um, this will be heavy stuff. This will not be very performing. Um, Velo mobiles are so different, so special from trikes that um, it would be a completely new product. Um, our engineer has a Velo mobile which he built himself. Our head of production is riding a Velo mobile, but um, I wouldn't expect an HP Velo mobile in the near future. I won't exclude it, but I don't see it now. Okay. But we are looking left and looking right. So this is what I can promise. Uh, this year we were um, concentrating on luggage for, um, we were concentrating on the new motor system from Neo drives. Uh, we have a project which we will show um, the next month. But uh, it won't be a Velo mobile. It won't be a carbon frame. All right, Gork fifty seven. Any plans to expand the lower price range in trikes? Now you do have the uh, Gecko uh, that yeah. you have produced, which is in that price price range. Is that some some place you're looking to expand, or you just kind of use that as part of your line for now? Um, actually, I mean the Gecko. The Gecko was um, put on on a psychological call it in German, we say um, um, Eckpreise, corner, corner prices. I don't know, corner pricing is this common in, in English. Um, 
So we try to lo lower to keep it below two thousand dollars or two thousand euros. Um, what we did not want to do was um, getting below typical HP Velotechnic quality. So um, two thousand euros might be expensive for other for for regular bicycle but for an hp velotechnic um this is quite a low price if you would if we would go lower we would um, probably have to um, buy in a lack of quality which we don't like so um, we try to make hp velotechnic quality achievable but uh, we won't do it for any price Right. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I think I think that does. So you have certain standards below which you yep. don't want to fall. Exactly. So, so any question that has to do with your I mean, if line. It, if, it, if we can, we, we're always, as I said, we're looking left, we're looking right, we're looking up, and we're looking down. Open so, um, to uh, changes open if, they, if they meet uh, Every direction, the especially. Thank you for, um, for telling me that there's interest in... Even even cheaper products. Um, of course, if we could sell forty thousand uh, trikes a year, maybe we had some economies of scale, which we could, um, of course, would um, give to the customer. But um, at the at the moment, we don't see HP value technical quality to an even lower price. All right, how about this one? So this is uh, John Williams, or buddy in London. I was wondering if you have made a tandem yeah. trike in the past and if that's something you may consider in the future. There's another option. What do you think? Yeah, we haven't we haven't made a tandem trike. Actually, um, our engineer <laughs> our engineer is uh, crazy, crazy sometimes. Um, um, some might have seen the back-to-back -back tandem he built on base of speed machines. Um, he already also um, made a side-by-side -side tandem on base of scorpions. So it cut through the frames of scorpions and welded it together. Um, so in this in his leisure time, um, he's allowed to do everything <laughs> and he does. Um, in our Within our company, um, he can do a lot of things. If it's too crazy, we limit him. <laughs> but <laughs> um, Nothing wrong with the ideas being put out there, right? You can always, yeah. you can always look at the Definitely. ideas and Decide, like yeah, you're like right. Sometimes, sometimes you see <clears throat> um, some of our products, some of or many of our products um, were not planned to be a, to be a serial thing, to be a real product. They were just like living out craziness, like just for fun. I mean, it's like HP Villa Technic was founded. They, um, De Paul and Daniel, they never planned to have a company. They just wanted to make fun, and out of this fun, a company evolved. Amazing. And um, so the the spirit is still there. We encourage we encourage our engineers to uh, just make fun, and whether it becomes a serial product or a product at all, um, will be decided later. It's mostly a team decision. Um, Okay. So let's say you will see you will see tandems, recumbent tandems on HP Velocity pr premises yet, but not as products or zero products at this point. Maybe in the future, I don't know. Um, so we'll not, hold that thought in our heads until we actually we're, see. We're not, we're not talk at the moment. The double seater. I mean, in 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 bicycle industry, you regularly um, talk talk about the next and the the next year and the year after next year um so i can tell anything about the products 2023 maybe on spacey 2023 we'll see some really weird stuff all right we're gonna hold you and take a look at those so all right let's finish up with a couple of questions that i got this week for you mm -hmm. heiko first from pete via bent rider he says i'm in the process of changing springs on my scorpion front suspension and i find 
the HP documentation uh, inadequate uh, for me. Um, I'm curious as to how the whole front end works. I'm hoping that there may be a video teardown or something along those lines of the suspension, the front end suspension. Can you point him in the right direction for that? Yeah. Um, we won't produce a video in the, by next week. Um, as you might have seen, we um, already, already pr produced workshop videos on a quite low level because um, you don't start, you don't start if, you, if, you, if you want to build a house, you won't start building everything or with the most complicated part, but uh, we have to learn. So we started with some low level workshop videos and the project is not dead. Um, we plan to make more workshop videos. Um, I don't think a spring mounting video will come within the next two weeks. So um, what would you? I would, I would take. I would yeah. take. But but um, if he's if he's got um, if he needs if he, if he needs support, I know, especially in like in Australia where we only have two dealers or something like this, or in Canada, it's not that easy to uh, get to the next local dealer. Normally, normally I would say. Go to the next dealer, even if you want to do it yourself, he might help you. He might uh, give you advice. Um, if it's impossible to get to a dealer, you might always um, mail us uh, at, at mail at hpvillatech.com or more specific, our technical support under technic, T E C H N I K, technic, like in Velotechnic. Just like at, it says below your name there, yes. Yeah, ex exactly. Technic at HP Villa Technic, and um, we will try to help. I mean, my t uh, our technical support. He's got a camera. He um, often makes some little videos on request, or uh, shows pictures, and um, so they will help him out. They would help. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Larry Hager, our, our buddy yeah, up in no, Canada. Name, yeah, yeah. Larry says, hey, there are Canadian dealers. Yeah. So, um, yeah. We I know. know good, to see, good to see you, Larry. All right. One last question here, and then I think we're going to wrap it up. Uh, also, this was from uh, Bent Rider. There was a question there about uh, the HP wheel alignment tool, which some people really liked. And so I was wondering, I, I wanted to ask you about the availability of that. Where, where can they get that? And do you recommend uh, people using those? Yeah, I think um, I'm not quite sure whether we sell it generally. Um, um, I mean, how, how often do we have to align? We, we intended it for, for, um, for dealers. So uh, if you're a dealer, you have to check al alignment of wheels 10, 20, 30, 100 times. Um, for a private person, I'm not, not quite sure whether we will sell it to private persons. Um, there's an article number, and so I think you could buy it. Um, but even then, how often do we have to align the wheels? Yeah. If you have to align it, normally it's because uh, it's damaged. So uh, on we align we align the wheels when when the trike leaves the company and um there has to be some severe impact to uh disalign so um okay of course, so if I, you i think you can yeah. i th think you can buy it but uh if you really I, it really need to do it check with your dealer perhaps mm -hmm. and see if they can order it for you if you really felt like you had the yeah. need to do that so all right very good well Heiko, what a great job. It was absolute pleasure having you on the show. Oh, it's um, a pleasure talking to you and um, a, a special pleasure to be invited to uh, get in touch with the community. Yes, and so we may do that again. We love really you. appreciate it. So I'm, please like uh, personally. Love you, love you. If you liked it, please leave a like. <laughs> leave a like, yeah, that's always good. So, uh, And please wish uh, Paul a happy birthday personally for us when you see him next thank you? you all right our best hp velotechnic all the guys down there thank you so much heiko truffle we'll see you next time bye all right guys
<laughs> Terrific. Well, uh, yeah, that went a little long. So I think we're going to pass on the uh, panel discussion today. We'll save that for next time around. Let me kind of bring you up to date on uh, what's coming up next on the uh, next couple of town halls. First of all, let's see, Sunday, April 26th. That's next Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern time. We have Marco Ruga, uh, an Italian bent racer and builder. He has um, a YouTube channel. He does amazing stuff in his shop. Uh, really interesting guy. He's an advocate for bent riding and riding in general in Italy, which apparently from talking to him, it's a tough thing to do there. So I think you really uh, enjoy meeting Marco. And also uh, next Sunday, we're going to have Pat Franz on. Uh, Pat is, of course, the owner of TerraCycle and uh, a very long time sponsor of the Laidback Bike Report. Pat's going to bring us up to date on what's going on at TerraCycle today. Uh, what they're doing to uh, work through the coronavirus situation. Uh, he tells me that business is still doing pretty well, but they've had to make a lot of uh, changes there to accommodate uh, social distancing and such. So look forward to talking to our good friend, Pat Franz. Uh, that's next week. Oh, the week after that is, uh, you can come on back to me if you would. The next uh, show will be uh, um, May 3rd. That's also a town hall. Very unusual show, an idea I've had in the back of my mind for a while, having to do with uh, bent riding musicians. Now, we've had a few musicians on the show uh, and kind of incidentally uh, talked about their music, but we're going to do an entire town hall with bent riding musicians. And we've got like four or five of them lined up for you. A couple of... Uh, a couple of guys from the UK, Kevin Brown, a very prominent uh, jazz and bluegrass uh, guitar player. John Hodkin, our, our buddy Inner Tuba, is going to be on with us. Uh, our own Tim Kane, uh, our uh, panelist, plays the guitar and uh, does some rock music. He's going to produce something for us. And you might remember David Brandenberger, the, uh, the solo trike guy that was down in Australia when we last talked to him. He's kind of stranded uh, right now in New Zealand, and he has created a couple of songs for us as well. So I hope you'll uh, join us on May 3rd at 2 p.m. for the musical Bent Riding Show. Uh, the next regular laid back bike report will be May 10th. Uh, we haven't worked out what's going on that yet, but we will let you know as soon as we do. Uh, Bent Expo, the videos we've produced. I did one with uh, Heiko that's now available. And we have uh, two or three coming up very soon here I'm working on right now. Ice Trikes, Cruise Bike, and Azub are, uh, are creating um, some videos with me for Bent Expo. So you'll learn more about those companies when we uh, put those out here in the next couple of weeks. All right, guys. So as a reminder, please remember to like, subscribe, and learn more about us by clicking on that little white eye up there, uh, take it to our website, and also the Patreon uh, website that we have going. I will put that link in the, uh, in the description below, as always. If you can, please support us on Patreon. Uh, it can be done for as little as a dollar a month. really helps us to continue producing the shows that we're doing uh, and you can see right up here, we can also put your pictures up here and indicate that you are a Patreon patron right there. We'd, we'd be happy to do that as well. All right. So how about uh, bringing on my panelists? Uh, guys, great job again today. Uh, we had uh, some technical difficulties. We may be having one right now. Oh, there we go. Here we go. So yeah, guys, thanks a lot. Uh, for uh, working through the program and helping us make this all great. Uh, Peter and, and uh, Doug, I'm sorry, we really didn't get a chance to talk to you too much with the panel. I'm going to just leave more time next time. I know I say that each time. Uh, <laughs> and Because I've got a lot of things I know I want to talk about, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on them. So stay with us, folks. We will get these guys on eventually. So thanks, fellas. Really appreciate it. So thanks to all my panelists. Thanks so much, mostly to um, bring it on back to me, if you would, guys, to my guests, my two special guests today. Uh, Lars, we may have lost Lars. I don't even see him there. Lars? Yep. All right. Good. Um, so, yeah, thanks to my uh, two guests. Uh, 
Hardy and Heiko today uh, for helping me out. And most of all, thanks to all of you for watching the Laidback Bike Report every week right now. We really appreciate you and your support. So until our next webcast, from all of us here at the Laidback Bike Report, so long, Bent Riders.